Good morning and welcome to Inside Tennessee along with my colleague John North. I'm John Becker and we appreciate you joining us on this Sunday morning. We hope you're warming up just a bit after the week we've had. We're going to jump into some politics, but first some context on the state legislature and the start. We want to show you a graphic of the supermajority that Republicans hold in the House of Representatives in our state. It is 75 to 24. That, my friends, is a walkout majority, meaning Democrats could literally not show up and Republicans Republicans could not only do business, but pass any bill they see fit. We welcome back to this broadcast the leader of the House, Speaker Cameron Sexton of Knoxville, or excuse me, Crossville. He's in Knoxville He's used now. to live there. Oh, it's nice to have you here. We consider him a uh, Knoxville. Yeah. And you are uh, in term number seven in the state legislature, and we're glad to have you with Thank us. Thank you. Our panel this morning, great to have you back in-house, and glad you made missing. it safely. We did, okay. just barely. Don Bosch, he's a Democrat, runs his own law firm, and Good. Susan Richardson and Williams runs her own PR firm. She's a Republican. That graphic made me happy. Some I know. Of us <laughs> a long it's time ever to get so to gently <laughs> starting to trend the other way, but we'll see. It's been so. true that way for more than a decade now. Mr. <laughs> Speaker, let's start with this. At the start of the session, uh, uh, Rep. Memphis Democrat London, London Lamar said this about the state of the state, and I want to get your take. People's lives are shorter and commutes are longer. Working families have less financial security and experience more problems getting health care and child care. Our kids are growing up in public schools with too little funding and communities with too much gun violence. Is that the Tennessee you live in? No, I think when you look back over the last 13 years under Republican majorities and super majorities, we've invested $3.6 billion in public education. The previous 13 years were $1.3 billion. So we've invested in public education. The other thing, the reason there's more traffic and takes longer to get somewhere because we have so many people moving to the state of Tennessee. And so how can you have all these people wanting to live into your state, all these businesses wanting to come to your state to have a description like that? We're going to talk uh, specifics, but I want to talk big picture <laughs> as well about the state of the economy in this state. Uh, new numbers out in late December from the Boyd Center on the University of Tennessee campus shows that the they're predicting our uh, economy is going to shrink just a mm -hmm. bit. There's not going to be as much money right. coming in. Your one job is to balance the state budget. That's in the Constitution. Typically, we see 3,000 bills proposed, maybe 10 percent, 300 or so mm -hmm. that pass. How big a challenge is it to have a smaller pot to spend from? Well, we haven't really spent all the money that we've had over these years with Governor Hasm and Governor Lee. We spent some. We've spent some on non-recurring and put a lot into higher education and capital projects and infrastructure and road projects. Uh, and so all that money comes back. What I would remind listeners is when we started 13 years ago with Governor Haslam, he had to cut a billion dollars from the state budget. At that, Since then, we have been on the trajectory up. And so we are still way ahead where we ever were 13 years ago. And so the little eclipse or the little downfall that we have is still more than what we have had. We budgeted well, we expect it, and we're going to try to work ourselves through this. Staying on the budget, Mr. Speaker, um, we're hearing projections that maybe if there's an increase for the budget this year, it's maybe 1% or may just try to be sort of at the same level. Mm -hmm. You all did a lot of significant spending last year mm -hmm. to meet some needs and cover some problems. I'm just right. wondering if you have a sense of like uh, how big the budget might be? You thinking probably pretty much the same? It'll be, it'll be equivalent. I mean, because we spent, I think, about $2 billion on TDOT regional right. road projects. All that was non reoccurring, that was recurring money. So all that money will flow back through. So even if we're growing 1%, we still have that money coming back in. Well, let's talk education. The governor's number one priority, he's made very clear, is school choice, ESAs. And the last time that that came around, you all ended up with Hamilton and Davidson mm -hmm. and, and Shelby and took Knox out. Right. What are you hearing? Do you think there is more appetite for it this time around? I think there's more appetite post-COVID. I think you saw uh, Young and Governor Yunker get elected in Virginia over um, issues in the schools and parents wanting to have more ability to decide uh, what their child should do. Uh, and so I think there is more opportunity this year for that. This this is outside of TISA, so it's not inside the K-12 through funding like an ESA, so that's why it's a scholarship. Um, and so I think you should allow parents to have a choice. You know, we've I've traveled the state and talked to parents 
parents of all income levels. Um, and there's nothing worse than a parent who doesn't have the means knowing something's wrong with their child or that school may not be the right fit for various reasons and not having the capability of making the change for their child. All we're saying is let's give them the opportunity if they want to, they don't have to, but if they feel like it's best, then it should be the parent's choice. Do you, are you getting by in this time from the rural legislators? Because that seems We're working be through it. I mean, I think this is going to be a much different bill. And so I think a lot of people are looking at this just as a school choice. We're looking at this as an overall education thing. Because the other thing that government does that I think is really bad, we treat everybody the same. And so we have school systems who are performing well, but we're treating them like Shelby County, which is the lowest performing school system. So we need to give school systems the freedom and autonomy based on their performance, give them more the ability to be treated like a private school and go that route. And I think we're going to get there. It's just going to take some time to work through the details. One of your concerns has been oversight of <coughs> student performance as well as performance from educators. But the latest numbers show that students involved in the voucher pilot program are performing worse on uh, test scores than students who are in the public school system. What do you make of that and whether that portends some problems ahead? Well, I think first you have to look at the students. They have to be in a failing school, which means they're more than likely going to be at least two grades behind. And so you're you're judging them on one year data. So they're data. not starting at the same line. We're you're, you're talking well, about you're, you're, you're making a switch, and so they're already behind. So say they're performing worse, it's going to take time. But when you do talk to parents, when the governor had his press conference to announce choice, he had parents who came up and said, my child now wants to go to school. My child doesn't want to stay home from school. So there's an immediate impact of that child wanting to learn and wanting to go first, which is very important. The second part is getting them to the attainment. We do know from that Senate education hearing that parents who are a part of this are very supportive of it. I think it's above 90%, but we're going to dive into that right. and more specifics done. We'll get to that in a minute. We're going to take a quick break on Inside Tennessee on this Sunday morning. Stay with us. We'll be right back with the Speaker of the House.